Hey guys, today we're going to take a look at these 105 amp hour 3.2 volt lithium iron phosphate cells that I picked up for rather cheap on AliExpress. Now over the past year I've seen a lot of people sharing links to either these specific cells uh, or this particular store on AliExpress because the cells are so cheap and like everybody else people are trying to save money. So I purchased these from the Lidocala official store on AliExpress. And in the comments, I often see people saying they're not good, they don't test right. Other people say, oh, they're great. So, um, you know, I just thought I would purchase some and see what we got. I will say that I already do not like them. However, I'll save my opinions and uh, reasoning for that for the end of the video. I have not tested these cells yet, and I do want to test them first to see what they actually uh, test at. I purchased these cells on July 31st, 2021. I paid $171 with tax and shipping included, and that comes out to approximately $43 per cell. And they have been sitting since then, so, so that's approximately four to five months on the shelf. Right away, you can probably tell my primary concern, they are bulged quite a bit. I mean, you can see top to bottom rocking, side and side rocking. Um, these cells are not flat by any means. You can see the label they apply to it. It says Lido Cala 3.2 volts, 105 amp hours, and a date of August 2021. And then each one also has their individual QR code. Now, to my knowledge, Lido Cala does not actually uh, manufacture cells. And at first guess, you may say these look like E cells. That's what I thought too. So it actually does say 3.2 volt, 105 amp hours on the barcode. Uh, so we know this is not a higher capacity cell that's been uh, wrapped and sold with a lower rating. And here we can see the identifier associated with the QR code. Now, in my personal experience, uh, these EVE cells typically start with 02Y. Additionally, if we look at all four cells, we have three different QR types. So you can see this one starts with 239. Here we have 400. And here we have another 400. If I put one of these cells next to a battery pack made of EVE cells, you can see they look pretty much identical. They have the same terminals, the same positive and negative markings, the same vent style, a round blue circle with a little hole poked in it. QR codes in the same location here. But if we get a close up of the EVE cells, you can see, like I said, they are coded with 02Y. So again, not saying they're not EVEs, but uh, these are definitely suspicious in my opinion. So these cells do have welded posts, which actually look very nice. They did a good job welding these posts on. Um, looking over the vents, three of the four look good. This last one down here has got a little bit of corrosion, or I really don't know what's going on down there. It looks like maybe moisture or something got in. Looking at the side profile, again, you can see how bloated these cells are. Uh, they are not flat. And one thing I did notice here is that the blue wrapping of the cell on the left is uh, a different color than these other three. Uh, it's, it's actually a like more vibrant shade of blue. I don't know if you can tell that or not there. All right, and then one other thing I noticed is that if you peel off this top piece here, there's actually another QR code in between the vent and the negative terminal. And you can see it's been scratched off in the center. So I don't really know if that's the original QR code. Unfortunately, I don't have any genuine EVE cells that I could pull the top off and see what's under there. All of the other packs I have are spot welded and I don't really want to tear those apart. So, so for testing these, I'm going to go ahead and build a 12 volt battery. So we have uh, positive, negative, positive, negative. These bus bars are actually copper. I did file one down here. Which one was it? It was this one here. You can see I filed down and it is actually copper inside, so I guess it's nickel plated. And then we have uh, flat washers and we have nuts. So we need a bus bar up here. We need one down here and we need one up here. So I've got a, a balance lead. I'm using a JBD BMS here. All right, so I have an extra bus bar and an extra washer, uh, but I'm actually short two nuts. All right, so luckily I had some flange nuts that fit. These are M6 studs here. Um, so I've got my JBD BMS I'll be using for this test. Uh, one thing I did notice is that uh, trying to tighten down the nut here, and I hardly tightened it down a little bit, and it looks like the stud is actually moving. So I'm not sure if you can see that or not, but the, the welded part of the stud down here is actually rotating a little bit when I do that. So um, that's, that's kind of concerning, to be honest. But... All right, so I've got the BMS connected completely. The Bluetooth module is on, the BMS is on. Uh, so here we can see in the app the voltages these cells arrived at. So I'm gonna charge these up with 12 volts. We'll let them balance out a little bit and then we'll do our capacity test. All right, we got 50 amps going in.
All right, this battery has completed balancing and we're ready for our discharge capacity test now. We are now a week past uh, the first part of this video simply because I set this aside to work on the jack up here battery. Um, that's why some of the wiring changed here a little bit. Additionally, I ended up adding the second wiring harness at the top here, this balance plug. And I used my iCharger X6 to get this battery perfectly in balance. This battery is balanced very well here at the top of charge. I don't think we're going to get any better than this. And this is definitely better than most batteries we test. It's almost perfect. So now we have our standard test set up here. That is the Batrium shunt. An inverter with some light bulbs for a 20 amp load on this battery. And our display over here showing voltage amperage wattage, discharged amp hours, and discharged watt hours. All right, so you can see we're discharging at approximately 22 amps here. Uh, we'll leave this run until the BMS shuts it down. And uh, as long as I have this extra balance connector here, I'm going to plug in this BatGo display just so we can see the voltages of each cell uh, throughout this test and at the end of the test. And we can see what that looks like here. And one other thing I wanted to notice is how this cell on the right here, now there was some space there originally, but this is really bloated up and you can really see it by looking at the side profile. Uh, if I put like a straight edge here, you can see that cell is swollen up quite a bit, so. All right, guys, so we're just under 80 amp hours here, and I noticed that uh, one of these cells is very low, so I think this is going to shut off at any minute there. You can see number two is sitting at 2.5 volts, so I'll give it about, there it goes, it just shut down. So the capacity of our 105 hour battery pack is 80.36 amp hours. 80 amp hours on a 105 amp hour rated battery. This battery's a turd. There's no other way to describe it. All right, so one thing I wanted to test on this battery was the internal resistance of the individual cells. And I really should have tested this at 100% uh, state of charge. We have 0 0.25 milliohms, 0 0.28 milliohms, 0 0.24 milliohms, and 0 0.27 milliohms. Now you might be thinking, oh, maybe I just got a bad cell, you know what happens, but even if cell number two was, was a little bit better, cell number one wasn't far behind it when you look at the voltages at the end of the test. Um, so I don't, I don't think that would have made a difference. I might have gotten an extra five amp hours out of it, but still, um, even 85 amp hours is well below the rated capacity of 105 amp hours. Now I did mention in the beginning of my test that I did not like these cells from the start. I kind of already had my own opinion formed of them, but I wanted the review to be unbiased. So now I'll explain my experience and opinions with these batteries. So I purchased these batteries on July 31st, 2021. And you know, a couple of months go by and they never show up. The tracking information is not showing anything. You know, it's the typical story. Uh, so there was a 75 day guarantee. And so AliExpress sent me an email and pretty much said, your buyer protection is about to expire. Did you like the cells? Did you receive them? And I said, well, you know, it's 75 days and I haven't received my batteries yet. So my options were to either let the protection expire or I can open a dispute and say they weren't received. So I chose to open a dispute because I don't want to lose my money. So the seller responded and pretty much said they're still en route. Uh, they told me to contact my local post office and collect them there. In the end, the seller was unable to provide a tracking number that showed where my batteries were at. So AliExpress had decided in my favor and refunded me the full cost of my purchase. Now, about two weeks later, these cells finally show up in the mail, and I, I felt kind of bad because, you know, I had gotten a refund and I received the product and I'm an honest person, but, you know, the more it went on and the more I look at these batteries, it's, these, these are advertised as grade A new in all capital letters in this listing. You know, these are not grade A cells. You can see from the start, they're bloated, they're mismatched, the wrappings are different colors, there's three different QR codes on here. They tested uh, below 80% of their rated capacity. Yeah, I know COVID's delaying tracking and whatnot, but there are just too many small things that are adding up here. Uh, so you may still be thinking, well, maybe you just got a bad batch of batteries. And uh, no, I didn't because this is not the first order I've purchased from them. This is the first order of batteries I purchased from the same store. These are different cells. These are 100 amp hour. This was the other listing that was getting shared around quite a bit. So I purchased these cells back in January of 2021 and they arrived on time, but they were a little bit bloated, not quite as bad as the ones I just reviewed, but they were bloated enough that I didn't bother doing anything with them. And uh, when I had tested them, they were slightly below the 100 amp hour rating as well. So it wasn't just these cells. I have two orders now from the same company of the same similar cheap cells that they're selling as grade A new.
And I know it's not just me as well. I've read so many comments of other people saying they order them, they test below capacity, they never show up in the mail, yada, yada, yada. So, so what it comes down to is the age old saying, you get what you pay for. You might save a couple extra bucks buying these cells from the store. So maybe if they tested at 100 or 102 amp hour, something in that ballpark, I would have said this might be a decent deal for grade B cells. I don't know why they're so bloated. They're either bloated because they were overcharged, bloated because they were allowed to over discharge, maybe because they sat for a long time, or uh, they're just used worn cells and they're not new. So, uh, so I don't know what more to say on this. I think people need to stop purchasing these, stop sharing this link, and look for a more reputable place to purchase things from. If you think I overlooked something or I may have missed something, feel free to leave that in the comments. If you purchase some cells, some of these cells or some of the other kind, I want to share your experience as well. Feel free to do that as well. I would really appreciate it. Otherwise, hit that like button before you go, and thanks for watching.